Because I've created so much content at this point on particular figures in philosophy, often zeroing in on a particular text and thinker and topic and talking about that specifically, I get a lot of comments and questions and sometimes challenges that people bring up where it's clear to me that they haven't actually read the source material or if they did, they skimmed it, they didn't really engage it. And so I'm creating this video as uh, something I can post very quickly and easily as a sort of standard response to those sorts of things. And the very bottom line of it that I'm gonna lay out right here is, you gotta read the text. You, you simply have to read philosophy, there is no substitute for it in simply watching a video that's a summary of what's going on or listening to a podcast or anything like that. Now, true, you can, you can get books on audio, but that's also the same thing as actually like engaging with the source material. So if you've got a beef with Descartes, you really have to read Descartes or you might not have a beef with him. You might have it with some other thing that you read over here that isn't actually what he's saying. So my bottom line is gonna always be, you gotta read the text and that's an important message. I do want to say why it is that, you know, this is important. And I think, you know, a little bit of reflection on why people might not get that reading the text is, is often so important, uh, you know, for its own sake, but also for the sake of developing a, a fuller understanding within the, the field of philosophy and <laughs> in terms of whether you're going to comment on my stuff and expect uh, some sort of you know, response on my part. So why is it important to actually read the source texts? Well, because philosophical works are generally going to be, you know, quite complex and there's usually a lot going on in them. There's a few exceptions to that where you can say, well, I can summarize that in five lines, but that's, that's really the rarity. So, you know, if you're going to criticize Plato or Descartes or Kant or whoever it is that you're bringing up, um, you really have to go back and see what they were saying in the first place. It's not enough to rely on summaries that you're getting from a textbook or from a blog site or Wikipedia or anything like that, because that stuff could be, if not outright wrong, it could be mistaken, it could be distorting what's going on. And very often, the sorts of objections that people will bring up, you can find the answer to that um, considered within the text. The, the thinker will often say, somebody might say blah, 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 and then you know it'll be addressed right there in the text. I think it's also important that you read philosophical texts and you read primary texts because you don't want to deprive yourself of that. Life is, is relatively short and we live in this amazing time where we have access to so much via the internet, pretty much the, the whole of, you know, ancient through 19th century philosophy, even in a lot of 20th century philosophy and 21st century philosophy is available to you. You just gotta know how to Google and, and find the texts and then you can read them for yourself. There, there's no uh, reason why somebody who has the internet ought to be saying, oh, I, I can't read Plato because you know there's multiple versions of Plato's works out there for you. And there's many, many sites that can give you good insight into what's going on in those those works so it's you know it's critical that you don't deprive yourself of the opportunity to grow as an intellect by reading you know nietzsche by reading uh whoever it happens to be hegel okay hegel's very tough right but you probably if you want to weigh in about hegel you should read what he actually has to say so you know there's two big reasons. Another reason is, of course, <clears throat> my time is limited. 
And so if you're not doing the work of actually reading the author, as I constantly tell people they need to do, um, you really can't expect too much from me in taking away my fairly rare uh, free time and answering your objections or questions at great length when you could be answering it for yourself by looking to the text. So, you know, if you want to book me for a tutorial session, that's something quite different, but that's, you know, valuing my time properly. Um, you got to remember that I get a lot of comments and a lot of questions and even emails from people in a number of different uh, formats asking me if I would just, you know, take the time to look at this and, and think about th this set of ideas that they have. There's no way that I could do that even if I had not just 48 hour days, but even longer, you know, 72 or whatever comes after that in terms of, you know, uh, creating greater and greater amounts of time. So, you know, there's a lot of reasons why, why you want to be doing your own reading and reflection. There's one other thing I do want to say about this. Some people might come back and say, oh, but I did read the text. Well, if I'm posting this video, then you probably want to think about whether you read the text in an adequate manner for the material that you're looking at or whether you did something else instead. So I want to point out two things that are particularly problematic. One is what we call cherry picking, right? If you're reading and you're just like picking out certain passages that you think, oh, this is useful, this is useful, but you're not reading the text as a whole and taking in the person's thoughts as a whole, well, that's, that's going to be a problem, right? Because you're not understanding how all the parts fit together into whatever we have of that author. The other thing is skimming. You can't skim philosophical texts. That is, you know, people may tell you that you can, those people are full of it, and they probably don't know what they're talking about. It's, it's just not feasible to do that with this kind of literature. So if you want to understand Plato, you got to put in the time to read the Plato text. Doesn't mean you have to read everything the guy wrote, but if you've got a question and it's about the Euthyphro, you, you know, maybe devote a whole afternoon and not just 20 minutes to reading through that dialogue. Um, you know, and similarly with any other philosophical text and thinker, you have to be willing to set aside the time and the, the attention, the concentration to actually read through their, their work if you want to get the reward. So a um, lot of, you know, questions and comments I think can be addressed by this, this video. I uh, come back to the key idea. Um, you've got to read the text. Videos are not a substitute for a full understanding of what a philosophical author is up to.